see. So now, we'll pull this guy out. Here we are with a vacuum system that's not working. Um, the main switch for the vacuum is right up here. We have a C and an S. So this uh, suction side is the one that's not working. Um, this is a standard light switch. These are commonly used to activate our vacuum pumps. And so the customers say that when they move this, nothing happens. Um, we did check the circuit breaker panel. Um, everything is um, reset. Nothing is uh, tripped out the wrong way. Um, unfortunately, it's not um, labeled, but that doesn't really matter right now because nothing is obviously tripped. It would be one of these breakers that is buddied up together, and because they're not um, tripped, I'm going to just go ahead and move on and go downstairs and look at the vacuum itself and see if we can find out why it's not working. What we have here is a dual wet rain pump system. Um, these are mid marks, and they are 1.25 horsepower vacuum pumps. Uh, presently the control is shared, however we have dual power coming in, one side for each pump. And we also have um, a activation here where we've got our low voltage. What we have is the blue and the red come out and then they come here to low voltage wiring that goes up to our switch. This is connected to the switch that was not working earlier and um, these are actually in parallel. So when we flip the switch, we're actually connecting both of these through there. Now, this is an interesting setup because each one of these systems has a 24 volt going through it. And so actually the two 24 volts are partnered together. So we actually have two 24 volts that are laid on top of one another. So I don't know if this is a factor of the problem, um, but we do um, know what's going on here. And in order to troubleshoot this, the quickest thing that I can do to restore operation is attempt to remove the switch out of the equation. Typically things break where people touch them and I know that switch gets touched every day. The um, method we're gonna take is we're going to, with power off here, we are, because when we try and turn it on, it does not activate, okay? I did check both of the fuses. Fuses are visually good, all right? And we can even take a measurement on them, but I've already done that, and I know the fuses are good. So that there's a fuse, okay? And, and we can see it, it's not blown. Um, these higher amperage fuses, it's easier to tell if there's a problem with them. All right, so those back on. We're going to disconnect these two wire nuts with the system off here. This is just low voltage, 24 volts, and those those broke off like a champ. Um, here we go. So we'll unscrew that. 
All right, and then we'll unscrew this, and we will buddy those up together. They were, all the reds were put together, and then the white and the blues were put together, so that's how that was. Now with these two together, I'm expecting to flip this switch, and, and I'm expecting, if that was the problem up there, the pump will turn on. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a failed switch upstairs. Now let's go ahead and check this with the second pump. Make sure we can get both pumps running. And if that's confirmed, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, see about getting the switch upstairs replaced and get this issue resolved. So what we're going to do, we'll do the same process again. We will disconnect these two wire nuts. All right, and remove this little pigtail out of the circuit. And then we'll take these two, connect them together. And this is how, if you do not have a remote um, way to start your pump, this is exactly how you can expect to have your, um, your pump look. You're gonna have these two hooked together. And this is a super easy way on any wet ring pump or any pump system or a compressor with a three wire. You can always, the two that are coming out and connected. Now there's one that's a light, okay? But this is just for a 24 volt light for lit. As long as you can find the two that are the non-lighting and then go ahead and tie those together with the power off, all right, it will um, give you an opportunity to test and make sure that switch is, is not malfunctioning. This is something that um, w as long as the power is off can be safely done by a user because this wire, this wire nut is something that anybody could, could do. That's a possibility if you are in a real bind and need to cut the circuit in half, this is how I would accomplish that. So now that we've bypassed that, we'll try the other pump. So we got one, two pumps. So now we know the problem is between here and the switch itself. So let's go ahead and see if we can find what the problem is. We are going to tie all these wires together like they were, except the vacuum pump, we're gonna leave that out of the circuit. Um, we're gonna tie the two end wires together and then we're gonna go upstairs and then we'll use our ohmmeter to go ahead and actually check the continuity coming down and we're gonna make sure that we can actually ring all the way through um, from one side to the other and that, that there's not a problem in the wiring. Because right now the problem could either be the wiring or it could actually be the switch itself. We'll see what we, uh, we get. So right now I'm going to just take these caps and this is just temporarily, I'll put them on here. Okay, and then all we're gonna be doing is ohming them out, so there's not gonna be really a, uh, a lot of current going through that. And we're just gonna tie that together a little bit there so that, well, break it off there. So strip that. And then we'll just take these and let's tie them together. The wire net's not really necessary because um, again, there's no current gonna be going through these. Um, other than what's uh, generated by the ohmmeter. And we'll also make it so it's not touching anything. All right, let's go upstairs. So this is the suction switch again. We're going to pull the switch out here. And again, this is extremely common to use a standard light switch in order to activate the suction. This is pretty, pretty common. Um, this switch is rated at up to, generally they're rated to about 120 volts. And so the total voltage going through this is 24 volts AC, or 24 volts DC. DC. So now, we'll pull this guy out. All right. Ooh. All right, that was not good. <laughs> um, I guess that's a reason why uh, making assumptions in this industry is uh, is not um, a good idea. I would have expected that somebody had um, wired in a low voltage switch to, to actually control a high voltage. That's the right way to do it. If you're installing a system, the right thing to do is not to switch the actual main power coming in to the vacuums. Um, you wanna use the low voltage for precisely that reason, because using the low voltage to switch the pump is a safe way to do it. Switching the main power coming in every single time is not optimal. Um, so where that leaves us is there's probably a switch somewhere 
that is not known by the doctor that somebody turned off, which is really unfortunate because what we've got is we've actually got parallel activation of the pump. We have a switch that controls the high voltage going into it, and then we also have a switch controlling the low voltage. So the problem is really that the low voltage switch somewhere got flipped. So either we're gonna do one of two things. We're gonna try to find it and obviously fix the issue and identify to the doctor where that's activated from. It could be activated from a chair. Typically, what a doctor will do is in their primary operatory, they'll wire in a special switch so that they can turn on and off the vacuum as they're treating. It's entirely possible that that particular switch got knocked by somebody and that got turned off. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can trace these wires out. Now this building is an older building. It's uh, more of a traditional uh, Michigan basement. So it may be harder to actually get where these wires go, but we'll try to see if we can um, trace them out. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm gonna take this light and just see if I can verbally or visually follow them. And what do we have here? All right, so we've got um, these wires coming over here, over here. And then they're coming up through here and they're going that way. So let's see. And we've actually got some spare wires right here. So that's how come we start. So we start with two and then we've got a third one. So we're actually following a bundle of three wires here. Wires are going here. one wire going that way and going up there and then there's another wire going over there so I'm pretty sure what they've got is some sort of a chair activated switch that's going to control the vacuum pumps so let's see if we can go upstairs and do some sleuthing and figure out where um, the switch is that's turned off because of the arcing issue upstairs um, we're going to get a 220 volt switch that we're gonna replace when we're done, just to make sure the customer has a, a properly functioning uh, switch um, because we don't know what could have happened when that, that happened, so we'll make that right. Uh, for right now, we'll go ahead and um, get everything hooked back up and go try and find some space. Okay, so we're up in the operatories now. It was pretty clear that the those wires went up and they went in some different directions. What we're gonna do is look in the floor boxes to see if we can see an identical wire come up here. What can happen is they'll do a separate switch that's daisy chained throughout the operatories and this switch will be the one that controls the function of the, um, the vacuum from afar. So when a dentist is practicing, they can flip it on and flip it off. I have a feeling that switch got tripped. So we're going to look down the floor box and we'll just see what we've, what we've got here. Um, we've got, we do have a wire, but that appears to not have been really hooked up to anything. So I don't think that's our, I don't think that's our guy there. Let's go ahead and go to the next floor box. Oh, we're looking for, we're looking for something that's recently been disconnected or that's flipped into another position. And down here. Right, and so now this now we're looking for some sort of a low voltage wiring in here um, all right so I'm not seeing anything emerging from this area let me shine my light down in there all right and I don't see I'm not seeing that wire up in here um, nothing that looks like that. All right, last operatory. Let's see here. Do we see anything that looks similar? Probably not. Um, all right, I'm not seeing it in here. Um, Let's look at these rear cabinets. Okay, now we're just gonna look at this cabinet really thoroughly and see if there's any switches that are down in here. All right, now, what do we have 
here. All right, guys, come over here. Watch this right here. Look at that. That looks promising right there, okay? It's flipped in the off position. We've got wires that are similar to the ones that you want to go over there. All right, let's see what happens. Um, I actually need to double check to make sure I left the vacuum pump on. I might have left it off. Let's go back downstairs, try and flip the vacuum pump. I turned the switch on, so if we're able to get it, then we know that was it. I'll be honest, I'm thinking, if this unit is driven by that switch solely, then we're gonna buy, we're gonna take all this other crap out because I have a feeling it actually goes to a switch that probably is not even known about by the doctor. It's been probably on for years. Nobody's touched it and it finally got bumped and turned off. So it's probably a better use of our time to just go ahead and bypass the forgotten switch than it is to um, keep going down this road. Because um, I just, I don't see anything in this Plus, all this wiring just looks super sketchy. So we're just going to go ahead and I think the path forward is, I mean, it runs everywhere, but I don't think it's a part of their active business. So we're going to go ahead and just eliminate it and just see if we can get the pump to work with um, by simply using the switches upstairs like the customer's been accustomed to. All right, guys, here's where we're at. So through a very rocky troubleshooting journey, we ended at our destination, which is essentially the customer has a super secret switch that's so secret they didn't even know about it. This switch has probably been in the proper position ever since the customer has been here. And um, essentially this switch controls the whole system. So somebody hit it and they didn't realize they hit it and it created an emergency. So what we're gonna recommend is we're gonna recommend that the customer removes the extra complexity out of the system because essentially um, that switch that's on the wall controls the 220 volts that powers that whole pump. So by doing that, the customer is gonna to continue to operate the system in the exact way that they have been and there's not gonna be the extra point of failure that is in the switch. And then we're gonna go back down. Now that the system's working, um, we're gonna look at how this extra wiring creates extra vulnerabilities and has the potential to um, really negatively impact their, their schedule and their, um, their office. Um, we're gonna start here with the switch. If this switch dies, the customer's down, not good. This was just a scenario where it was turned in the wrong position and it created confusion and impacted them. So this is vulnerability number one. Vulnerability number two is gonna be all these junctions. All these places right here are places where there can be failure. Vulnerability number three is gonna be extremely long lengths of low voltage wiring that's routed and stressed around different places. If somebody cuts this, the system's gonna be down. This is a perfect example of excess complexity in a dental system that only has led to problems for the customer. So we're gonna simplify it and make their life better. So we're back to where we started in our troubleshooting journey. We're going to connect the blue and the red together on each of these pumps and then let the customer continue to operate the system from the switch upstairs. I've powered the system down. This is low voltage, it's 24 volt wiring. And let's crap out of there. Now that I've got the right tools, we're gonna go ahead and re-terminate these. Um, I've turned these on and off quite a bit, so let's go ahead and uh, get them stripped all nice and pretty. So now what we're gonna do is we just will hook these up together, like so. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we disconnected the extra unnecessary switch, the overly complex switch here. All right, this guy is out of the way. And we went ahead and we just buddied up these wires the way they were manufactured. They probably came like that. Um, now, when we go to turn the system on, it'll run fine. And then we'll just confirm that everything works upstairs with the switches. Let's go. Okay, 
So I'd say the problem is resolved and um, we had a mixture of over complexity, basically a customer unaware of how their system was configured. So we're gonna help them understand it and um, it shall be resolved.